your face. <laughs> you don't have to blow up the spot with those sounds. I wasn't supposed to still be on the screen. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Hey, 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 and we are back another Wednesday with Acting for Beginners live. Thank you guys for tuning in. I am Danny Guevarez, the founder and CEO of Acting for Beginners, and I am saying welcome to another great show. If you like it, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, share it, write comments, do all those great things. Because today we have a special guest. We have Mandisa Johnson of Atlanta Film and TV. And you're probably wondering what in the world is Atlanta Film and TV? Well, I'll let her tell you. Atlanta Film and TV's mission is to serve, empower, engage, and educate those that are a part of are looking to become involved in the Atlanta film and TV industry. Currently, we have over 270 informative blog posts. We have interviewed over 20 entertainment industry professionals within the Atlanta film and TV industry for our conversations with Atlanta's Movers and Shakers series. We have an ebook titled, How to Jumpstart Your Career in the Atlanta Film and TV Industry which is a guide to help newer actors who want to pursue a career in film and television. We offer coaching and we host our coffee chat and our Creative Juices networking event. For more on what Atlanta Film and TV is, be sure to stay tuned on Ask Atlanta Film and TV. You can stay tuned on Ask Atlanta Film and TV on uh, TikTok or you can just stay tuned right now because we have Mandisa Johnson. <laughs> Welcome. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. And I'm even better that I have you on here with me to talk about acting things Thank that I like. Me. Yes, you are so welcome. Thanks for being here. So before we get, well, we're going to get it started. Um, I know you guys saw that today's episode was going to be like the, the five tips or things that you should not do while you're on set. But because this is acting for beginners and I want all of you to know how different people get started in acting, everyone's journey is different. We're going to hear how Mandisa got started in acting and how it took her to where she is now. Would you share with our lovely viewers how you got started in acting? Sure. So I actually started acting for like the stage. Um, I had drama courses and um, I believe they started, I, I've been saying kindergarten, but I think they started in the first grade. We had it in school and we would put on performances, you know, uh, we had, we would have weekly drama classes. So we were able to practice what we would perform in class. And then at the end of the year, maybe like twice a year, we would put on a performance and then um Middle school, I really wasn't involved with that. That wasn't really the focus in middle school. But in high school, I um, did the Reader's Theater. We did Lorraine, Lorraine Hansberry Reader's Theater. And then I was a part of a children's acting troupe. It was more like um, my high school was college prep and we had the opportunity where sophomores through seniors didn't go to school on Wednesday. We would go out and do internships in the community. And one of my internships was to um, act in a children's troupe. And we traveled to different schools with, throughout the city, uh, Columbus, Ohio. And then I, um, there were other things that I did in high school, I don't remember, but one of the biggest things before I graduated was I got inducted into the International Thespian Society, um, which is like a, a big thing for high school actors. And then um, I was in the wits. Um, I had a small, well, not maybe not a small part, but I was more like a dancer. There's no small parts. Right. <laughs> um, I started undergrad 
as a theater major, but then I saw how much of a time commitment it was. I kind of wish that I would have stuck with it, but um, I um, didn't really do theater. I, I did more of like on-camera work for com in, in broadcast journalism, communication, and um, graduate school. I did entertainment business. Um, and then I did graduate school again and did creative writing where the script writing and all the writing comes from. So that's, that's my journey. Yeah. Okay. So you, your journey is, <clears throat> I would say similar to some different from others, as far as you actually like went to schools for, for this, not just taking classes, but you actually went, um, what would you say is the advantage of doing that? Um, well, one of the advantages of doing the entertainment business program is there's a lot of things that I know how to do on the business side. And now, right now, I cannot give legal advice, but I know how to read a contract and find holes in it. So since I'm not able to give legal advice, I do know people who are entertainment lawyers that I can refer people to. I know how to negotiate. Um, I know there's just like several things. I know a lot about the business, a lot about the entertainment business, um, in front of the camera, behind the camera. Um, and then the creative writing aspect, I pretty much know how to write scripts, film scripts the correct way. How, I'm sorry, how to um, tell a story the right way, um, how to check for grammar, um, and there's different, the different styles of writing, animation, writing for games, um, not just your typical, just one way script, but just several different forms of writing, writing for television um, and all that stuff. I actually have an animation that I wrote, um, nine episodes. So, yes. Oh, wow. Wow. So this leads me on to what we're here to talk about, tips of what not to do on set. You say you have an animation that, well, I mm -hmm. guess animation, you really don't have to deal with people being on set. Maybe just the voice over. Yes. Yes, voice over. So, well, let's just talk about what not to do on set anyway. <laughs> so um, on your TikTok, what is the name of your TikTok called? Atlanta Film and TV. But, we, but the, the thing that we do is called Ask Atlanta Film and TV. We get a lot of questions. Yeah. So, and, but I do pull from the blogs that I've written and just basically like some of the questions that people ask just based those TikToks on that. Uh, so did someone ask you about these tips, the, the five tips of what not to do or? No. So I wrote that blog three years ago. Um, but then I do know sometimes just from working on set, like, you know, one of the tips that we shared, don't bring family members on set because you want your family to be on camera. You can't do that if they're not booked. Mm -hmm. so actually yeah. seen that before. Oh, wow. Well, let's go ahead and get into tip number one. Tip number one, of course, it's exciting when you finally booked your first background role but don't get so excited that you go and share it on social media. <laughs> why? Why can't we share it on social media, Mandisa? Why? Because you are, you are, um, you sign your name to a non-disclosure agreement and that non-disclosure agreement is, once you sign your name to it, it's legally binding. And, one, and also it states when you sign your name, that you understand what the terms are on the on the paper. And even when you get a booking, um, I have seen someone years ago screenshot that they got booked, but in the bottom of the email in the fine print, it says, do not share this information. Like basically keep it to yourself. And she screenshot it with everything. And I sent her a message and I told her, you may want to take that down. In my mind, I'm thinking anybody can take that email address where you got booked, contact the casting company by creating a fake email, and then you'll be blacklisted forever. 
you won't be able to work with anybody. So that's mm -hmm. really important. And it's important not to share anything from um, set, especially on social media uh, while a production is filming because you don't want you don't want like certain things to get out beforehand. True. That is true. So you guys, when you are booked for a role, do not put your character out there. Do not say the name of the show. A lot of things change because there's still at that moment, nothing is set in stone. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear about how actors are like cut from a scene. <laughs> I'm, I like to be pretty quiet about certain things until I see it and like, OK, now I can go ahead and uh, yeah. <laughs> I can go ahead and promote. So let's go to tip number two. Tip number two never bring any family members onto set unless they have booked a role <laughs> now this is what you had mentioned did you want to elaborate a little bit more about yeah. that so i don't remember what set it was but somebody did bring family members and i they were like you know they knew who was he who was there because of the booking and then also like on the very first set that i worked on we were working at um a, a local college here and we were outside and um it was it wasn't like a big scene so of course everybody knew who was there but there was some random person that came that was trying to get filmed and it was you know it would have not been um consistent if you just see all of a sudden just see this man walking in so we had to have security, they had to have security escort him off set because he wasn't trying to leave, so. Oh, wow. He was trying to get his uh his screen time. He was trying to be on the big screen. <laughs> he was not trying to leave. And this crazy, because now it's like with, um, with all the viruses, COVID going on, to just bring people on set, that that's pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's also like I when I did my headshots, they had like COVID protocols. So I myself and the makeup artists were the only people that were allowed to be at at the photo shoot. And I couldn't let anybody I couldn't let anybody else come because mm -hmm. of the COVID protocol. So they're very, very strict. Yeah. Yeah. And also I know um we're going to talk about this. You have an event uh, coming up, the mom, um, a workshop for moms, momagers. And um, I'm just mentioning that because I know I was on set and one of the actress, she brought her child on set um, and the child was running like around every, everywhere. And she couldn't really do anything because she, you know, she's filming. So, <laughs> but it's like, so now everyone else has to, babysit you know but everyone there has jobs to do when it comes to you know bringing this film to life so even with the moms um the parents not just moms but the parents if you can just have a babysitter you know or, or something when you're going on set just because that's one less one less thing that you have to to do yeah that, that, that's very important because you know the production spin time and money to try to bring these productions to life. And if you have a screaming child or a crying baby on set, you know, that's going to be very, very disruptive. Yes. Yes. Very disruptive. You had to be yelling quiet on the set the whole time. I'm like, those aren't even the lines. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick commercial break. And after this, we will talk about tip number three, four and five. So, some things not to do. Happy Happy Beginners Live, Wednesday, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. Did y'all do that with Check me? us out on Facebook and YouTube. Your energy should be matching. You're going to have your moment where that camera is just on you. I'll talk about acting and other things. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and we're back. Uh, I don't know if they gave you enough time to get anything to drink or anything, some water. Um, if any of you are out there that are watching this, my replay watchers, if you would like your commercial posted, um, email me at acting for beginners. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. Email me at actingforbeginners.com and we can make that happen. If you want to be a guest on the show, email me at actingforbeginners at gmail.com. Um, yeah. So in that commercial, Mandisa, I saw the coffee coffee chat. Did you want to talk more about that before we get into the rest of the tips? Yeah. So every other month we try to host a coffee chat and the last coffee chat that we had was November and we had our first um, guest who was, which was Tina Fears. So this time we're having DeAndrea D. Green Esquire. She's an entertainment tax attorney with Bennett Thrasher. She's our guest speaker and she is very, 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 very passionate about the entertainment industry. And she is going to talk about film tax credits music tax credits and all that good stuff. Um, there's also an interview. She's the last interview on our website that we did for our movers and shakers. And it's also our Friday actually is also our third year anniversary. So I just thought to combine everything. Um, wow. Three okay. years. Three. Yes. Yeah. You said, and it's free. Yes, it's free. Okay. You guys hear that? It's free. There is no excuse why you cannot be there. Show up. I'll be there again. Uh, Atlanta Film and TV at gmail.com. Uh, that's how they can reach you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I can send them to link the link to um, RSVP. OK, cool beans. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get back into tip number three again if you are just now tuning in and have no idea what's going on i have mandisa johnson from atlanta film and tv with acting for beginners live today we are talking about the five things you should not do while you're on set and right now we're on tip number three here we go let's see what it is tip number three if you have your phone be sure you put it away while filming is taking place Oh, my bad. <laughs> ringing. Don't have your phone out snapping pictures. Not you're not even supposed to do that. Um, I don't really recall anybody ever having a phone out in the phone rings. Um, yeah, but just trying to get a pic quick picture in. Yeah, yeah. You know that's that's not professional at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, guys, I actually got caught doing that. I thought I could sneak a, I can't really say what movie it, it was, but <laughs> I was on set and I was like, oh, no one's going to know. I had my phone. I was like, let me see if I can, I was actually recording. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I was recording. I'm like, oh yeah. But see, I was thinking like, you know, I can record this. I got the footage. So when it comes out, then I would go ahead and, you know, use it and post it. But I was in there just filming and someone actually told on me. Oh, so wow. I'm like, who's, who's snitching? Who's, Cause the guy came to me, he was like, yeah. Um, uh, you know, someone said that you were here filming and taking pictures. If you do it again, we're gonna have to remove you from set. I'm like, what? Who's snitching? So then I didn't listen. Really, I was still trying to sneak. And right when I was trying to sneak, I saw the lady that snitched on me. She was staring. I have the I still have the picture. She was staring right in my camera oh my as I'm trying to sneak the sneak the photo. But um, so yeah, you guys, don't 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 be like me, okay? <laughs> No phones on, no, no, I guess have your phone off or on silent so it doesn't interrupt when they're filming with audio. And then also no pictures, unless I'm guessing the actress or, you know, actor says it's okay when y'all can do your selfies. You do have, you know, some moments where you can yeah. do that. Where, yeah, I, I shared with you where, um, a, a, I'm not going to say the name of the actor, um, mm -hmm. invited us to take a picture with him. Um, but that audio, the, the audio in filmmaking can pick up everything. So you gotta have that phone off. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Someone in the um, comments says snitches are the worst. <laughs> yes, they are. But I, I was wrong for what I for what I was doing. And someone else, I, you guys, I, was, I apologize. I'm still not sure why it's not showing me who's um, making the who's writing the comments. But I have another one that says good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too, and good morning and good night to our replay watchers. All right. So um, let's go on to. Tip number we're on tip number four, right? Four. Mm -hmm. Tip number four. When the director says quiet on the set, well, you know what to do. You know what to do. <laughs> That's pretty much self-explanatory, but why is this so so important? Um, because it's like, you know, they're on a time frame and they have a budget and they have to keep it within that time frame. And I shared with you before how there was one time where I was on my first set and we were in a big crowd and they just started, the director just yelled, cameras up, quiet and all that. And something happened. It was, I don't know, somebody shouted and the PA looked at me and he yelled at me. And I was not the person that was making noise. It was somebody else. Um, yeah. I just kind of looked at him, but you know, time is money when you're working on set. So when they say quiet, you know, don't keep talking, just you know, end your conversation. When you, when they, when when you have a break, when you have lunch, when you cut, that that's your opportunity to talk. Exactly. So like when you cut, when they cut, you have that sneeze. You're like, cut. I hold it in. That's when you go ahead and let it out. Or try to do a silent sneeze. Oh, gosh, that is the worst. Oh, oh. my goodness. It might come out somewhere else. All right, moving on. Tip number five. And tip number five, never, ever talk to any of the lead actors because they are working. Only talk to them unless they speak to you first. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a good one. So it's like they're trying to focus on their their lines. Um, a lot of actors are friendly. They'll come over to you and talk. I um, was working on the Sunday horse, which I don't even know if that film came out. And um, Ving Rangs kept walking back and forth. And he was just kept, every time he walked back and forth, how you doing young lady? And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I worked on Stomp the Yard, you know, Megan Good came over and started talking to us. So it wasn't that we were starting the conversation. It was them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it, I, I could agree with that. Even when I'm on set and I'm like, actually, you know, I have lines or whatever, and it's very emotional and the, a dr dramatic scene. Like you have to, you know, you want to stay there, mm -hmm. you know, because they say cut. And of course, you know, we got to continue. We have to do the scene over and over and over again. Close up, wides, mids, whatever they need. And then if you're stopping to be friendly, to talk to people, that's taking you out of, you know, the scene out of the moment. Um, so and then also, I know I was filming <clears throat> on set once with um, with Mike Epps. It was crazy because they were so in the moment. But then he like walk. So like like you said, Mandisa, the actors, they will talk to you. You know, they, a lot of them are pretty friendly, but he like walked by me and touched my jacket. And I was like, oh, my gosh, he touched my pleather. I'm like, I hope you can't tell it's pleather. But <laughs> oh, not my jacket. But yeah, they, they are. Um, the actors are pretty friendly. You do have some that have some some bad days. And that leads me to. Um, one of the members in the Facebook group, Leslie Gray, had put a comment. If you go to the Facebook group and uh, it's like a pre post to get this show, you know, up and going. And I had asked, what are some things that you should not do on set? Well, this is what she says that she experienced. This is from Leslie Gray. Thank you, Leslie, for um Posting this, she says, you shouldn't yell at people, LOL. I have seen that being a background actor. A well-known actor was way out of control. Very hard to watch the unraveling of this person. They kept forgetting their lines, so we had to stay on set until they got it right. Got on set at 10 a.m., got home at 1.30. The actor yelled at everyone, called people names, and then they cried. I felt horrible for them. I think it was a bit stressful for that person. A lot riding on top actors. Wow. 
<laughs> it could have been crazy. Calling people names. That's calling people names. Yeah, yelling at people because she didn't know. Um, Leslie was saying that she didn't know her lines. So, and it gets stressful. It gets stressful. You know, you make you you um, forget your lines. You have everyone watching you. You when your pride gets in the way. You know, you're the the actress that everyone's there to see, and you're messing up. Um, so that comes with you know not talking to the actor, especially if they're yelling at you. <laughs> but that could be a distraction. You know, um, so yeah, definitely don't yell at. If, if you're the actor, if you're the background actor, if you're just the PA helping, you know, you still want to be um, nice on on set and just act like a, an adult with some sense. Because um, right. it could definitely get you blackballed as well. Yeah. There was an actress that um, they were saying that she was, you know, had a little rant on set. Mm -hmm. um, they were saying it was a, some a mental thing, like she was bipolar or whatever the case is. But um, so yeah, she was blackballed from from set. So gets I, pretty. I remember that. I remember. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of her name right now. Um, I know she's been in a few things, but I'm not here to, you know, diss her or downgrade play her name because she's a great actress. But things happen, you know. Uh, just she was probably just having a bad day, and then some people can be afraid of bad days <laughs> from others. Um. So yeah, there's a comment right here. But uh, that actor forgot their lines on every set. They kept asking the background actors for their lines. They were not very nice to us either. Wow. Yeah, and that that sticks with you. Like mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. go to see your favorite actor or actress, and they're and they're yelling, and you know that can kind of that can really turn you away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, that really can. Uh, thanks for those comments. Um, let me see what uh, I'm like, let me see what else we have here. <laughs> I think that's all all of our our five tips. And thank you again, Leslie, for giving that that other one. Um, before we let you go, Mandisa, mm -hmm. did you want to talk about any more of your events or anything else that you have coming up? Um, the Momagers Workshop is February twelfth. It's breaking into the business of entertainment, a workshop for momagers. So it's, you know, basically it's a course for moms to, to know how to operate in the world of entertainment, how to, you know, when the casting comes across and they say, submit this and you don't submit something, but your daughter is really cute. Um, for instance, I cast for a music video and we asked, well, I am casting for a music video for kids. And we specifically asked for their a video of their child singing. Well, mm -hmm. there were a few instances where those parents did not submit videos of their child singing. And it's just like, that's in the casting call. Read the whole casting. You, if you read the whole casting and submit what is asked of the casting director, then you, your child has a better chance of being selected. You mm -hmm. know, just stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, cool. That's and that's a great um, workshop to attend. So, for all of the moms that are watching, or if you are a child actor and you're watching this, and you like, mom, you want to be my manager, you want to be my momager, please uh, attend uh, Atlanta Film and TV's workshop that's coming up. And what was the date? February 12th, you guys. February 12th. Excuse me, from 10 a.m. to uh, 10 a.m. to 12. 10 a.m. to 12. And then the coffee chat is this Saturday, right? Yes, and that's at noon, too. Mm -hmm. So to get in touch with Mandisa, please email her at AtlantaFilmAndTV at gmail.com. Again, if you guys want to be a guest on the show or would like to show your commercials, reels, anything related to acting, please email me at ActingForBeginners at gmail.com. Uh, let's make sure um, we don't have any more comments before we get off this thing. J Jason Mamos. Uh, Momoa was so nice to work with, and I am a GG now. Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm getting into acting now. A GG. Got grandma, grandmother. Oh, <laughs> see, I call my grandma granny. I'm like a GG. GG or Nana. <laughs> uh, these are like the, the hip, cool names for granny. 
Ah, okay, the, the young grannies now. <laughs> so thank you, Mandisa, for being on the show. You are so welcome. Um, so again, thank you guys for tuning in and um, I'll see you uh, next time. Next week, we'll have Kennedy Bell on the show and um, I'll see you. We'll see you there. And don't forget to get your planners.